what's up it's time i want to talk real quick about the shortstops because it's becoming clear there's going to be a little bit of a musical chairs uh, thing going on uh, with the shortstop market and we haven't really specifically talked about this of course it's been a topic of conversation that's come up multiple times in other videos to the off season to date uh, but i figured it was worth its own little spotlight here so uh, first and foremost, I think we got to start internally, and Do Hyung Park from MLB.com mentioned this in a recent article that no, there is not an internal candidate uh, at shortstop. Royce Lewis is expected to be rehabbing into the summer, uh, which, you know, summer starts in late June. Uh, so I think we are probably, I I'm kind of viewing it as that if Royce is back in August, that would be a plus. Um, so no, Royce Lewis is not an option here uh, until later on the year. Brooks Lee I mean, I'm not even really sold that he's a shortstop, but of course he was just drafted. He's not really an option, especially opening day either. Um, so that kind of just move that out of the way. That's not an option. Uh, we are hearing from John Morosi today that the Cubs are interested in the big four free agents, which is in, you know an interesting team to throw out there because they're not one of the teams that is losing one of these big four. So they're a team that's trying to come in and snatch one of these guys up. Speaking of the teams who are going to be after these guys, this is from MLB Trade Rumors. Um, they have uh, four experts that listed their predicted landing place for all these guys. And as you can see here, there were uh, six teams among all these top four shortstops that, that were chosen. The Giants, the Twins, the Phillies, the Dodgers, the Mariners, and the Cubs. So the Cubs, you know, as Morosi, that wasn't super unexpected that the Cubs were going to be in this mix. Uh, but only six teams, and it's interesting to note that the Red Sox and Braves, who are two of the teams losing one of these free agents, are not listed. So Red Sox expected just to shift uh, Trevor Story, who they signed last season, back to shortstop. Braves, I'm guessing people are expecting them to move Von Grissom to short, who that's his natural position. He had to play second base for them with Ozzy Albies out this year. Uh, one of those two, they'll switch to shortstop. That's a pretty good situation there. And so both those teams kind of able to do the Carlos Correa, Jeremy Pena thing to where they have somebody uh, internally. All those stories obviously more established, but they have they have an internal option they like to replace them with. Uh, but again, those six teams mentioned. So that means somebody's going to miss out. And of course, probably more than six teams are going to be in the shopping, but uh, those are the expected landing places. This is what I find really interesting with the Cubs, though, is they already have... Not a great shortstop, but they already have a pretty darn good shortstop in Nico Horner, um, who, as you see here in terms of Fangraphs War, was only one behind Carlos Correa. Uh, Carlos Correa was ninth among shortstops. Nico Horner was 10th. Now, I think the most natural thing that would happen, uh, what the Cubs would want to do, is just to shift Horner to second base if they sign Correa, let's say. Um, I think that's probably the case also with the Phillies. If they were to sign someone, they would shift Bryson Stott from short to second. Uh, perhaps the Mariners would also do that with J.P. Crawford shifting him from short to second. Um, but, I mean, everybody has a price. You know, maybe if, you know, speaking of that musical chairs thing, you know, all of a sudden if, um, you know, a team like the Cubs signs one of these big short setups, Yes, they probably would like to keep Nico Horner. Plan A would be to keep Nico Horner and just move him to second base. But, you know, again, there's a price you can pay. There's probably a package you can build, and he becomes more available on the trade market than he would be otherwise. I'm not saying they would look to trade him right out the gate, and that would be their plan. But, you know, right now, I think it would be really hard to get him off the Cubs if they had a shortstop. And they have some other guys that can play second base, Nick Madrigal, uh, Christopher Morell, there's a few other guys in the mix there. Um, I think you, he could be got. You know, you're going to have to pay, you're going to have to make a good trade offer. It's not like they're going to just tra trade low on him, basically. Uh, but I think that that uh, shifts the pool, uh, the, the shortstop talent pool, um, of having maybe more on the trade market. So it'll be really fascinating to see how all of this develops, the order in which things progress, excuse me. Um, and, you know, I think we can expect, based on what the Twins have done in previous years, that they're going to be the ones kind of at the end ready to sort of pick up the pieces, which, you know, is can be frustrating from a fan's standpoint. Uh, but it is the kind of uh, the, the way it landed them Carlos Correa last offseason. So uh, we like that. <laughs> anyway, thanks to all the members here, the premium members. Really appreciate y'all. Going to be talking about relievers for members. Um, so if you'd like to support the channel, it's $1.99 a month or $2.99 a month gets you on this list here. Um, and again, I'm going to be doing some members-only talk on the bullpen. We'll kind of transition that into a uh, a channel-wide video, so be looking out for that soon. 
Uh, either way, we'll talk again soon. Thank you so much.